But, but the commodity space has been buzzing a lot as well, especially for the crude oil prices, where we have seen uh, the prices actually trying to put the best quarter, best third quarter in last three years. Peter McQuire, CEO of Exam Australia, now joins us to talk more about that. Peter, hi. How are you looking at the crude oil prices? It's up 16% in this quarter. And what all factors would you say that actually have helped prices really run up? Well, I think it's been, and thank you for inviting me on the show, I think it's a number of key points that need to be considered. First off, we've seen that gradual decline and further sell-off as far as US dollar. Secondly, we've seen the hurricane issues working through from Harvey to Irma and now new hurricanes entering that Gulf region. And we're still you know, two months away from the end of the season, so there's that fear factor of Mother Nature. And thirdly, it was probably oversold to the downside. You've seen rent, uh, Brent rally very, very strongly and WTI through $50 now a barrel. The premiums are, or the spreads are around about $5.50 premium Brent versus WTI and money managers and hedge funds are stacking positions to the upside, backwardation for Brent and I think that's all for making it perform even stronger than many analysts probably considered going back you know, two to three weeks ago. So all of those components into the market have done very, very well for it. Mm -hmm. So what are you watching in sense of the OPEC and the Allies meeting tomorrow? What is on the agenda? What can we see coming in on the fourth? Well, there's, there's, I think a couple of things. First off, you've got increasing demand and that's really satisfying a lot of the oil producers. Uh, and that's coming from Asia and, of course, certain other you know, regions of the world. So that, that uh, consensus is growing. So there's a, there's a good side as far as crude needs to be considered. We're still, a, we're still you know, $97 a barrel cheaper than what we were in mid-2008. So it's relatively cheap in, I think, oil at $50 a barrel. And the other side, of course, that, that the talk as far as the meeting, as long as there's compliance and that will be considered and, and reviewed tomorrow, there will, I think, be an extension out to March of 31 next year, rolling it forward a further three months as far as those production cuts and trying to get some equilibrium back into the market. It may take you know, another six months, may take another nine months to actually work that overhang out. And it's just a, it's just a process, it's just a point in time. And possibly by 2019, I think that equilibrium will return back to market. Well, that point is well taken, Peter. But what is your sense on where can we expect the crude oil prices going forward from here? Are you looking at further gains? Well, I think so. I, you know, it's, unless you see something dramatic happen from a weather outage and you see you know, further hurricanes coming through that to, uh, Texas region and, of course, what happens to the, you know, the, the Gulf of Mexico, um, we may see additional hurricanes disrupting there. The geopolitics, it's an unknown as far as North Korea and no one can put their mind at ease and say, well, that, that situation's over. And with President Trump's rhetoric as far as war and, uh, and prepared to do whatever, um, then those concerns certainly impact the market. And then the third part is it's been a hedge fund trade, uh, been very, very strong uptick over that matter of the last week or two. And that's probably with money managers stacking long positions, so they're interested in trading at higher. And the crude overhang, you know, slowly um, wearing through the market and working out of the market, they're all the right ingredients for crude at the moment. But markets can turn quickly. But I think at the present time, it's hard to start, hard to be in the um, uh, hard to look too far ahead because I really feel that you know that crude at 51, 52 for WT, I'd probably be the ceiling. And I think Brent will probably, you know, 57. But things happen very quickly and don't be surprised to take them higher than this. <laughs> well, absolutely. A lot of movement of volatility is seen in crude. But not just that, Peter. The gold prices have been very volatile, down $65 in last 11 or 12 trading sessions. Where do you see those prices headed? Well, you put your mind back to around about the 8th or 9th of September, we were at 1365. There was talk there that you could see 1380. The un again, the geopolitics were playing into it. US dollar, of course, and just the general undercurrent, you know, we're going to see it up from here. Now we're sitting at 1295, 12, 1299 sort of range. That will probably, uh, with the Fed's talk there and hawkish comments from um, Fed Reserve Chairman Janet Yellen, all of those concerns need to be thought through. And if we do see a rate rise and um, inflation is the key ingredient that we haven't seen take off. So I as far as US and really globally. So I think, I think you're gonna see a 1275 to 1280 handle further downside. And it's had a really big washout. 
and this month will be a, a, a great demonstration as far as what's a, what real volatility does to a market. 12.65, uh, pardon me, 13.65, now you know 12.95, very, very solid sell-off, and I would say further downside from here. I expect it to probably bounce a little bit, but uh, I think the general sentiment is you know bearish. Well, clearly, yes, 1300 broken, not just in the global markets, but the Indian prices have seen key psychological levels break down, both for gold and silver here. But the metal space, and we saw aluminum prices at six-year highs, copper has been up 45% in the past one year. Where are the metals headed, and which one are you buying at these current levels? Yeah, I mean, that aluminum price has just been a one-way trip. It's been phenomenal uptick over the last year, and certainly, you know, from the viewer's standpoint, copper has been outstanding from 4,500 a metric ton now trading, you know, the best part of 6,600 a metric ton, up 45% in a year. Aluminium, similar numbers, um, zinc, nickel, tin, all of them are very, very strong. You, and you would have to say that it's, it's relatively cheap in the, in the big scheme of things, what we experienced going back to the, you know, the super cycle days of the late, you know, 09 sort of prices, 08. Uh, where we saw those, you know, far greater than what we're what we're seeing now. You know, copper at 11,000, 11,500 a metric ton, and now at 6,500. So the market was certainly sold off. I think there's probably further upside for those base metal markets, and don't be surprised to see, you know, stronger numbers over the short to medium term. The U.S. dollar is going to have an effect, but I think overall global demand is, you know, really picking up. Construction, naturally, you know, much use for all of those base metals and exporting and just sheer, you know, demographics, more consumption uh, globally. <laughs> well, that really is the case, Peter. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you coming by and answering all of those questions there. That is the view coming in from Peter McQuarr. Consolidation in crude bearishness in precious metals, but it is the base metal space which still may see further rise from.